Oh, hello there. Welcome back to Twin City Tidbits. Inventor Charles Kettering once said that research means you don't know but are willing to find out. At Twin City Fan Companies, we take that to heart and that's why in this episode, we are highlighting our multi-purpose research and product development facility. Our journey is just beginning, so strap in those seatbelts. Let's check in with the team to dive in further. There are three different chambers in the lab because of the different airflow rates and the different pressures and the different fan types that we offer. For a higher flow rate, we want a bigger chamber, a larger chamber that can handle the larger velocities or larger area. The smaller chamber that we have is geared more towards pressure blowers or powered roof ventilators, which either build a lot of pressure or don't generate much flow. So just like you have a vacuum cleaner at home, and you might want to have a quiet vacuum cleaner as much as you can. The same applies for fans. Fans out in the field want to be more or less hidden. They don't want to be heard. They don't want to be seen. They just need to do their job. Having a reverberant room to measure sound with a microphone in it, we have the fan running and we're measuring either the inlet or outlet or total sound that the fan's producing. The unique parts of our lab would be the, the slight geometry of the room itself the way we hang our microphone from a, a rotating boom from the ceiling. That gives us a, a time and a space average rather than just having a microphone sitting in the room. When vibration levels are too high, the, the fan life will be shortened, the bearing life could be reduced. You're going to run into other mechanical problems and mechanical issues. Wherever that fan is installed, there might be other systems that attached to it, which are going to be affected by high vibration. That's why AMCA 204 exists as an AMCA standard for vibration limits. It sets the vibration levels as the fans leave the factory, and those can be specified by the customer if they want a finer balance or a little bit looser balance, depending on the application. Uh, a catastrophic failure is never a fun thing to have. That's why we do the overspeed testing in the lab. But the goal of overspeed testing is to make sure that we don't deform the material. We, we don't want to bend the metal beyond its limit. It needs to stay within its allowable stresses so that we don't have uh, accelerated fatigue failure or straight out catastrophic failure of parts coming apart. It's a requirement to make sure that in the engineering development process that overspeed testing is done to ensure those things don't happen out in the field. TCF has a unique piece of equipment that no other fan manufacturer has in their laboratory, which is an earthquake simulator. The intent of the table is to shake the equipment at a very high level, roughly an eight or nine on the Richter scale. Having the ability to physically test a unit on a table is valuable and then it gives us insight into our design structure. It gives us a better idea of how the fans will react. And on top of that, it gives our reps and customers some assurance that a physical test has been done to prove that the equipment will be operational following an earthquake. On powered roof ventilators, it's not uncommon to have motors fail just because of lack of grease or other mechanical issues. It's less common thanks to having UL testing available and UL listings available that those failures are due to fires or short circuits or breakdown of the electrical components within the motor itself. The purpose of our UL lab is to mitigate that risk of having components fail in that fashion out in the field. We subject them to a variety of tests as laid out by UL. We give them a, a, wide, ver a wide variation of voltage that it might see out in the field. We give them low voltage, which would increase the amperage, making it more likely that higher amperage leads to higher heat within the motor that would break it down sooner. We do other tests where it's, it's a torture test on the motor to make sure that under any condition that it's gonna see out in the environment, out in the field, that it's going to survive and function as intended. 3D printing at PCF started with a single Creality printer. Uh, this was kind of the first step into creating prototypes for the next-gen Sentrif. And so it started from a need to create rapid 
prototypes or new designs that could be changed quickly and modified to get test results. When we take a new prototype or a new design for a fan from aerodynamics to manufacturing to drawings to scheduling the chamber time to getting the physical results on the large chambers can be anywhere from three to five months. However, with these 3D printers, we can make the wheels in-house, we can print them, and we can use our stream chambers to get results from design to numbers in about three days. The goal for the rapid prototyping room at Twin City Fan Companies is to familiarize ourselves with this cutting edge technology so that as it grows and expands, we're able to grow and expand with it. The capabilities of our research and product development lab are truly amazing. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.